Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'd like to show you proper adenosine administration. So first of all, we have a patient who is showing you a supraventricular tachycardia, as you see on the monitor. And at this point, we already have placed the patient on the monitor, acquired the blood pressure, placed the pulse ox, and if the patient is saturating less than 94%, we have provided supplemental oxygen. At this point, we have determined that the patient's blood pressure is 140 over 90. Uh, his rhythm is supraventricular tachycardia, and to confirm, I can print a rhythm strip um, and see that I do, in fact, have an SVT rhythm. We determined that the patient does not have chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, confusion, to warn him to be uh, essentially unstable dysrhythmia, which needs synchronized cardioversion. So at this point, we determined the patient is stable, uh, and also the patient has good mentation and is able to follow commands. The first step that I'm going to do is we're going to try vagal maneuvers. And you're not going to ask your patient to bear down and take a crap. What you want to do is you want to give a syringe. There's no needle on the syringe, right? And what you're going to do is sit, him, sit the patient up and ask the patient to seal their lips around the syringe and push out the plunger uh, with their breath, with their breathing. So force the plunger out. And they're going to seal their lips, and they're going to do this procedure uh, until the plunger is all the way out, uh, or about 15 seconds. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lower the patient's flat, and what you're going to do is raise the patient's leg, observing the monitor for uh, cardioversion. If this doesn't occur, that means that the patient has not responded to your non-invasive uh, therapy, which was uh, providing uh, vagal maneuver stimulation with the syringe. And you could look at the revert trial. This was very successfully uh, done where they have converted patient utilizing this method. So now we determine this uh, procedure did not work. And now we need to uh, go back and uh, look at our pharmacologic uh, intervention. So in this case, it's going to be adenosine. So what is adenosine? So adenosine is at the endogenous uh, purine, a nucleoside. So what does all that mean? It means endogenous means it's inside your body. Purine, uh, we have a couple of purines, right? Uh, adenine and guanine. And if you recall from DNA and RNA, uh, they uh, make up the basis, right? So uh, adenosine is an endogenous purine. And if you remember, pure is gold, right? Uh, pure is gold. A S is adenine, G, guanine. So here we're using adenosine. Um, and then uh, what is a nucleoside? So a nucleoside is essentially a nucleotide with an adjacent sugar on it. So we have uh, adenosine combined with the sugar uh, being nucleoside. So this is what we're going to, to give the patient. So what does it do? The way it works, it blocks the atrioventricular node. So that's the AV node conduction, and it does so by uh, A1 receptors in the cardiac tissue. What's very important to note about this drug, it has very rapid onset and has a half-life of less than 10 seconds. So you want to initiate your IV access as most proximally to the patient as possible. The next thing you need to know that uh, uh, adenosine is stable uh, with normal saline. They did another study and have determined that you could place adenosine with saline and it will not uh, uh, distort it. It will not um, make it uh, uh, more uh, dilute. Um, it's actually very stable if it's with uh, normal saline or sodium chloride, 0.9%. And now I'm going to show you the best method of employing it. So the best method that they conducted was a study when they looked at a single syringe versus two syringe. And what they discovered is if you take a single syringe uh, with the initial dose of 6 milligrams of adenosine, that will be 2 ml, you fill it up with 2 ml of six milligrams adenosine, and the rest of it, 18 ml, you will fill up with saline, and they gave it as one syringe. And then they had two syringe system, where they essentially had one syringe filled up with adenosine, and the other syringe filled up with 20 cc's of normal saline. And they looked at which converts uh, SVT to a normal sinus rhythm. So a single syringe, uh, they determined that SVT to normal sinus rhythm, 73.1% uh, conversion from first six milligram administration. With two syringe system, SVT to normal saline was only 40.7%. So a single syringe was much more efficacious in achieving normal sinus rhythm. And also they looked at after three doses. So first dose is 6 milligrams, second dose is 12, and third dose is 12. So after third, three doses with a single syringe method, all patients 100% have converted to normal sinus rhythm. Where after three doses with two syringes, only 70.4% of patients converted to normal sinus rhythm. So single syringe was much more efficacious, and I'll post links to this to this study below, and also to the study that uh, looked at uh, placing adenosine with normal saline and how compatible is it. So let me show you how I would go about administering. 
uh, it the best way first, and then I'm going to show you the inferior techniques, and I'll explain to you why they're inferior. So the best way is a single syringe. So you have your adenosine, 6 milligrams in 2 mLs, and you have a 20 C syringe, so I'm only going to take right the 2 mLs, so essentially the entire adenosine um, um, medication. So what I do first is I verify my 6 rights. I make sure my expiration date is not expired. I always like to clean the top, right? And then I have my needle already connected to. And then I want to draw up the entire medication. So our patient is now uh, on EKG monitoring, continuous EKG monitoring, and we're just preparing the medication. And I'll explain to you why I think this method is probably the best method of administering this medication. So I got all of it. What I want to do at this point, I want to remove the remainder um, of the air, the excess air, right? So that I don't give an air embolus to my patient. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come take my alcohol, come to my saline, and I said I'm going to fill the remainder of the syringe up to 20 ml of saline. So I cleanse my port where I'm going to acquire it from. I, I place my needle in. And I'm going to drop the remainder of my saline. So here I have 20. Right? Get all the air bubbles out because I don't want to give anything to my patient. And now what I'm going to do is I no longer need this needle. This is uh, going to Sharps container. So I'll discard this and place this in the Sharps container. I come to my patient and I find my proximal line, right, which will be this port here. I again want to cleanse it, right? Now, we again see that it's a, a SVT rhythm. We determine, again, the patient is uh, stable uh, with good blood pressure, mentation, right? Uh, and the patient is able to talk to us. We're going to inform the patient. We're going to give you this medication. You're going to feel like your heart is going to stop, but we need to slow down your heart uh, to give this medicine to you. And what I also like to do is before I give this medicine, I click print. So it's continuous printout strip. So I can see when actual chemical cardioversion took place. So I hit print. It's starting to print. I cleansed, cleanse my site. I connect my medication. And very important, you need to occlude this port here so there's no backflow of the medication. And then what I do is, in one continuous motion, right, I'm going to give this rapidly over one to two seconds. I gave this medication, right, and then what I want to do is I want to observe the patient, right, for, for change in the rhythm. Right, so you see change here. Right, and then... Right. So the patient had a brief episode of uh, asystole and then returned to a normal science rhythm. At this point, it's very important to monitor the patient, so ob obtain their mental status, right? their name or where they are, right? um, what date is it. Uh, you want to get another set of uh, vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, pulse oximeter reading, right? respiratory rate. And uh, you want to obtain a 12 lead ECG uh, to see if there's any other abnormalities that the patient may experience. So this is essentially how I would give this drug, right? Uh, uh, quickly bolus this medication and observe the change of the cardioversion. And then you could initiate your uh, IV uh, fluid, right? Um, and monitor the patient. Now, let me show you a couple of ways that would be inferior of giving it. And I saw these uh, ways being administered. So the first way that was... Uh, that this was given, which I don't advocate you doing it, right? So the first way, let me get a let me get a needle here. So the first way we're gonna um, that I don't like to get to for it to be given is pretend we have uh, adenosine here, and it was also a single syringe method. But what they were doing is as follows: they would connect the syringe like so, and we're going to say it's already pre-filled with adenosine. And then the next step that they going that they did was they let the fluid run, right? They would occlude the patient site, and now its only connection is to the IV fluid, and then they will fill up the remainder, right, of the same. And the problem with this is that uh, you may have air bubbles forming here, as you see, um, here because there may be some air bubbles um, in the tubing on the syringe and then what 
uh, may also happen is if you inadvertently forget to close this side towards the patient, this will fill up with blood coming from the patient's side. And then you need to remember to again occlude here and then give it in one in one mass. So essentially the, te the technique was given as follows. Occlude the patient's side with the adenosine already with 2 ml here. Draw up 20 cc's of fluid because your RV fluid is running. And again, you see I have some, some air pockets build up. Then occlude the to the fluid and give it rapidly to the patient. So the reason why I don't like to give it this way is that if you forget to occlude from the patient side, you may essentially inadvertently pull up uh, the blood coming from the patient and st instead of saline. And two, if you forget to close this side, you're going to essentially uh, distribute the, the drug between the patient and your fluid. And also you have air pockets forming here, which essentially can give an air embolus to the patient. So I would not advocate using this method. The next method that I'm going to show you I'm going to close my saline here for a moment, was uh, already pre-drawn pre uh, here, right? This is uh, adenosine and this is a three-way stopcock. And the way the three-way stopcock works is where this point is positioned to, that port is closed. So this port is closed here. If I do it this way, it's closed here. If I do it this way, it's now open to all three ports, right? open to all three ports. So whatever this off position points to, that one is closed. So the way this was being administered, you connect this to the patient, and then you connect your adenosine here, and you connect your flush here. So th the first problem with this is that, A, it's very hard to find a three-way stopcock. Not all services carry it. So you already may be at disadvantage too. If you forget which way is off, you may close one or the other. And we, we said that the half-life of this drug is less than 10 seconds. So rapid administration is very crucial. And then from this standpoint, what you're going to do is you need to close the site to your fluid. You give your adenosine, and then you give your your flush, right? So a few problems, as I said, right? You may not always have a three-way stopcock. You may forget which way is off, right? In this type of situation. And if you have never done practicing uh, with this device, it will be cumbersome for you to learn it at the bedside of someone who is showing you supraventricular tachycardia, right? And patient who may become unstable. So uh, again, this would not be the best technique to employ. And then the final one, uh, technique that I see very often taught, which is the worst of them all. First of all, it doesn't even follow AHA guidelines. I see the drug is given via two syringe method. Um, is draw up adenosine here, and they utilize instead of 20 cc's, which is recommended flush, they utilize a 10 cc flush. And what they would do is they would first connect this medication like so, give the medicine. And you notice some of the medication is still in this tubing here. It didn't all reach my patient. And then I have to disconnect this, connect my flush, and then go ahead and administer. Right? So the problem with this method, first of all, uh, it's a, you, you don't have enough flush right, to administer. Two, it's too slow. When I give that denosine, I would say a good amount of my medication is still stuck in, 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 this, in this tubing. Right, so I'm not giving the patient the full amount, and it's really starting to break up before I, I give my uh, flush. And we said that uh, 10, under 10 seconds right, for this medication, uh, the half-life. So again, this is an inferior technique. So the, the best technique to employ would be a single syringe method. Right, Take a 20 cc syringe, uh, draw up uh, 2 milligrams or 6, uh, sorry, 2 ml or 6 milligrams of adenosine, and fill the remainder with saline. Right? Make sure there's no air bubbles in here to give patient, right? You don't want to give patient air bubbles. And then either you have a saline lock or if you start uh, IV fluids, right? You have your access port here. And then you cleanse the site, connect it like so. And then you're going to look at the monitor when you administer your medication. So I think this would be the best way to do.